Hello all, welcome to VMware Arena YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see 20 features which you only see in vSphere 7.0. I will take you through each of the feature in vSphere 7. So before we get started, please do subscribe to VMware Arena YouTube channel to get the latest updates. So whenever I publish a new videos. So no more wait time. Let's get started. We'll talk about the feature one by one. Okay, here it is. The number one feature is in the vSphere 7.0, we no more have vSphere web client. So we only have a HTML5 client. Prior to vSphere 7, we were having both vSphere web client and vSphere client HTML5 based one. So with the vCenter Server 7, we no more have a web client. We only have a HTML5. All the feature and plugins are supported in the HTML5 client. Number two is a backup server status, the vCenter Server backup status. If you connect to the, if you log into the vCenter Server using HTML5 client, it shows what is the last file-based backup was scheduled. So I don't have any scheduled configured. That's why it's showing. And also it shows the, the health status of vCenter Server appliance. So it shows from the home page. When you click on the appliance management, it will take you through the vCenter Server uh, appliance management WAMI page. You can log in with the root and credentials, and you can manage the uh, admin, you can manage the vCenter server appliance from the WAMI page. And this is the second feature. We are next going to talk about the third one is a lifecycle manager. So we use vCenter update manager to perform the upgrade and patching of ESXi host and other virtual appliances. With the vCenter 7.0, vSphere 7.0, we have Lifecycle Manager, which replaces the Update Manager. So Lifecycle Manager is a new solution which provides a unified software and firmware lifecycle management for the ESXi host in the vSphere 7. It is based on a new desired state model and we can upgrade our driver, firmware and everything into the single piece as similar to the Update Manager. This is very, very useful. And the Feature number four is a cluster DRS score. There are a lot of improvements has been brought to the DRS in the vSphere 7. A fancy DRS cluster score shows the score for all the virtual machines in this cluster. It shows the overall cluster score for the entire NA DRS enabled cluster. So on the next future, the number five is VM DRS score. As similar to the cluster DRS score, a VM DRS score shows the execution efficiency of each virtual machines and zero indicate a severe contention in the virtual machine and 100 being the no resource contention. So if you come under the cluster monitor under the vSphere DRS, we can see an individual virtual machine DRS score. So it shows the DRS score of each powered, off, powered on virtual machines in the cluster. So from here, we can understand whether virtual machine is having a contention or we want to take a look. And, and the next feature is workload management, which is nothing but in the vSphere 7, we have released vSphere with Kubernetes. So workspace management is vSphere with Kubernetes feature, which enables you to manage the namespaces. And namespaces provides compute, network, and also the storage for the application running in the containers. So we need to have a HA and DRS enabled cluster. We should have an NSXT configuration, and we should have a policy based storage policies, which is assigned to the storage. So we can click on enable to start enabling the work workload management and the number seven feature is new virtual machine view so in the vcenter server 7 we have option if you click on a vm we have option to switch to new view this new view provides all the details about uh, the virtual machine most of the details like whether we have a snapshot or not what is the virtual machine network which host it is running on what is the resource pool it is running what is the storage policies it is assigned with uh, what are the configuration of vSphere HA and DRS do we have any custom settings um, 
what is a network configuration we can take a console what is a vmware tool version everything so we can also uh, select and unselect the um, uh, you know like option which we want to see and if we want to switch back to the older view we can click on switch to classic view so which back which switch backs to the older view and the number future number eight is developer center so developer center was available in vsps 6.7 but why we are i am talking here is so developer center is a centralized location where you can learn about uh, development features so we can use the rest upis to export the vcenter profile and import it to the other vcenter server that is only possible via ap explorer and future number nine is vsan file service with vsan 7.0 released with vSphere 7 so now we have a vSAN file services introduced so it provides a file sharing services uh, using nfs which is curved out from the vSAN data store it provides uh, the option to create and file share so that the file share can be created and that file share can be used by the virtual machines or a client machine so we can see the uh, um, the shares which is created from the file share service this can be accessed to the uh, virtual machines and the future number 10 is trust authority cluster so trust authority cluster is introduced in vsps 7 so vmware trust authority cluster will be able to establish a trust relationship with the esxi host configuration to ensure that there is no alteration from the malware etc right so it creates a separate cluster uh, in the key management uh, communicates with the translated host among the managed hosts so this is one of the security feature a lot of uh, improvement in the security part also brought in the vsps 7.0 and the 11th feature is precision time protocol so especially in the financial sector so timestamp on the transaction and records are very should be precious the precious time uh, protocol provides an accurate clock occurrences within one millisecond range so we can use these options in uh, virtual machines to use that in the virtual machine precision time protocol so we have to enable the precision time protocol uh, at the host level as well this is the new feature which is released in uh, vsps 7.0 and the next feature number 12 is esxi hardware overview so this hardware overview under the configure tab so it provides a complete information about that particular hardware it shows what is the bias manufacturer what is the manufacturer what is the uh, service tag access tag of the virtual machine what are the memory configuration and it includes all the hardware related information like model all the information can be found here and the feature number 13 is ESXi firmware information. This is a consolidation overview of uh, what is the driver version and firmware version of devices which is connected to the ESXi. So we can see the firmware version of storage adapters, network adapters, and what is the BIOS uh, version of particular model. Since I'm running on a nested virtual machine, nested ESXi, I don't see the virtual, uh, the firmware and uh, driver version information here. But if you have the real physical physical hardware will see all the information in this firmware tape this is really useful especially when you are troubleshooting hardware issues and the next 14 is watchdog timer device so we can edit virtual machine settings this option the watchdog timer device is only available if you have a virtual machine hardware version is upgraded to uh, vm version 17 so to prevent the virtual machine from guest os failure for an extended period of time uh, we can add an watchdog uh, device so that it reboots the virtual machine if there is any failure in the operating system we can click on add new device and select the watchdog timer and we can enable the watchdog timer here so if it sees any failures in the operating system so it will restart the it will restart the uh, operating uh, virtual machines to recover the uh, virtual machines uh, uh, failures from the extended period of time this is one of the future which is as i said this is only available if you have upgraded your virtual machine hardware version to vms vmx uh, 17 that is which is released with the vsps 7 the the latest uh, hardware version is uh, vm version 17 so this is one of the excellent feature and next feature number 15 is vm template versioning so in the earlier version 
the managing the template version which is stored in the content library was uh, little uh, manual stuff so this option will be only available if you store your vm templates uh, in the content library so we have option to clone a virtual machine as a template to library if you if you do this one that template will be stored in the content library so we can see the versioning of each template and uh, so you can see the template version 3, 2, all this, this information. So we have an option called checkout and check-in. So checkout operation is to uh, update a virtual machine from the template. We can check out a virtual, we, we can check out a template and convert it to a virtual machine. And we can make all the changes like if you want to perform all the patching or whatever it is, then again, we can check in the template. After making all the necessary changes, on the virtual machine we can check in that particular virtual machine as a template that particular virtual machine will be acting as the the latest version of that particular template so in this example i'm uh, i'm uh, i made a changes to the virtual machine i'm checking uh, into a template so it will be converted as a template so if if we don't want to um, uh, keep the changes which we performed on the particular template so we have an option to revert to the previous version. So it shows me the template version. So my latest version is four. So if I want to uh, revert back to the previous version, I can select the previous version template. I can select revert to this version. So it reverts that uh, templates to be to <clears throat> the previous version. And next feature number 16 is content library advanced settings. So in the previous version, we know we don't have an option to specify the optimization and customization for a content library. So with the vSphere 7, now we can define the optimization settings for a content library. So we can define what is the sync duration what is a uh, whether we want to enable the auto sync what is the sync duration and how frequency the 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 synchronization should happen what is the library auto sync however all this information and performance optimization can be performed in the vcenter 7.0 this is only available in vcenter 7.0 so we don't have this option in the previous version of vSphere this helps us to control the network bandwidth and uh, uh, specify uh, define the frequency of uh, synchronization in the content library and next feature number 17 is vCenter update planner so upgrading a vCenter is always a, a important task because so we, we we need to have if if something broken at the vCenter server during an upgrade it it creates a uh, problem in managing your virtual infrastructure so basically, uh, we need to have some of the pre-check uh, to perform on uh, vCenter server upgrade that is introduced in uh, uh, vCenter 7.0. So if you if you see, uh, I have some issues which I don't have an internet connected to my vCenter. If you see, it shows what are the uh, next available patch or version available uh, for the vCenter. We can click on that and uh, run a pre-upgrade checks. So it will provide the list of errors and warning message which can impact our upgrade. So this is very useful before we attempt to upgrade on vCenter Server 7. And the future number 18 is vCenter Server Interruptibility Check. So Interruptibility Check is very important when we perform a, a vSphere environment upgrades. So we, before we upgrade any component of vSphere, we have to enter, ensure that we validate the interruptibility of other VMware products. For example, uh, VMware NSX or VMware uh, Site Recovery Manager, uh, we have to ensure that all the compatible version we are running it. So it is now the interruptibility check is inbuilt with the vCenter server. So it will automatically detect the other VMware products which is installed and registered with this vCenter server. It shows what is the current version which is installed and it also shows what is a compatible version with the uh, vCenter server which is running. If any of the um, the products or uh, features which is missing here we have option to modify product list we can manually add and check the interruptibility. So this helps us to simplify the interruptibility checks in a single place that also within the vCenter server it 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 reduces a lot of efforts when we perform on a vSphere upgrade in our infrastructure and the feature number 19 is multi-home 
multi home network uh, adop uh, adapter support for vsan server this is my vsan server appliance it supports up to four network adapters in the earlier version we don't have a multi nic support for uh, vsan server there are specific use cases where you want a, a dedicated network adapter uh, for a backup network or there are some use cases where you deploy on a uh, vsan server on dmz in that cases we may need an additional network adapter so here i logged into the wami page of uh, vsan server it shows my network adapters so nic 0 is for management and nic 1 is always reserved for vcha so if you are doing an uh, vsan server high availability so network adapter 1 is reserved for vcha this is one of the excellent feature which was uh, um, uh, requested in the previous version and it is introduced in the vcha server 7 in house it supports um, four network adapters so we can define the traffic purpose in the different uh, network adapters and the final the last feature which i am going to discuss is feature number 20 is in the vcenter server 7.0 we no more have an external platform service controller so in the earlier version if you see under the system configuration it will show whether the vcenter with the external uh, platform service controller or it shows vcenter with an embedded platform service controller but here it just shows a vcenter server even when you when you launch the vcenter server installer it it will it will it will alert you about the uh, the you know like the depreciation of external platform service controller so we no more have external platform service controller supported in the vcenter server 7.0 even if you have an external one it will be automatically converted to the embedded deployment i think uh, it's an uh, I hope it's very helpful for you. We talked about the 20 features, which is only available in the VSPS 7.0. Uh, I hope this is very informative for you. Please do share this video. Please, please do subscribe our channel to get the latest updates. If I post any new videos, uh, you will automatically get the notification when you click on the bell icon. Please do subscribe to the channel. This is uh, my kind request and uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video please put uh, which is your favorite feature in the comment section thank you so much stay safe bye bye